Greetings everyone, and welcome to the first of two installments of Extras in Corpse Party. This first installment is going to be a featurette of various things that I missed during my main playthrough. Well, the first of which was due to an editing screw-up, but the other things are due to my actually having never encountered them. These could be things from regular scenes in the game that were not necessary to progress, or wrong endings that... While flavorful, I either did not know how to get at the time, or chose to avoid due to wanting to maintain a certain mood. Uh, the reason I'm breaking this up into two installments is because I think this featurette will be about the length of a regular installment, and the extra chapters, which I'll feature next time, are about 45 minutes worth of footage, so I want to... Well, I, I don't want to make this drag on for freaking ever, so I'm going to split this up into two, so it actually works a little better this way, because each of these uh, installments will have its own distinct feel. So, without further ado, I will start off with a certain scene that I missed, uh, I encountered during the playthrough, but I forgot to edit in. It all started with the Unknown Key Room in Chapter 1. I remember to include a certain scene, which I'd missed, which was of me acquiring the unknown key to beat the chapter, but then I forgot to put in the room that the unknown key opens. <sighs> well, it wasn't overly plot intensive, but it is very flavorful. So, here it goes! Well, in my original playthrough you saw me get the unknown key, here's what it's used for. Regrettably, I actually, I think, had captured this footage, I just didn't insert it properly, so I totally screwed up. So let's take a look at what the one known key is for. For classroom 3A. What? Eh. <laughs> was like, uh... So we go in, alright, fine. So we see... Day duty... We got a pile of bones. A message has been scratched into the floor with fingernails. Whatever you do, don't look at the newspaper. Uh, otherwise... Yeah, an unlit candle. Nothing to see here. So all we can do is leave or look at the newspaper. And you know my morbid curiosity. Serial kidnapping ends in murder. The good name of Heavenly Host has been stained in blood as horrific details and disappearances have been revealed. The children that they suspected was kidnapping. They've located the whereabouts. They're discovered in the building. A male instructor was found with a pair of bloody scissors. We get this information later, but this is the first time you could see it in the game. And then you have the, uh, the torn off parts at the bottom. Um... And the music just stops. And the door's fixed like a decoration, like it is not opening. Um... Um... You will never leave this room. And now we got music. Um... Ooh! Let me out, 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 let me out. Ugh. Oh jeez. Screwed. Uh 
Um, um, uh, uh, oh, uh, it is too. <laughs> now I'm sad. Now you see, this was a rather important scene. Oh, the music stays. I was gonna say, this is a rather important scene because it kind of sets up, Na like, it kind of almost gives a little bit of fuel uh, to Naomi when she finally explodes on, say, go toward the end of the, uh, the chapter. So I very much regret not putting this in the original playthrough. I do apologize for that, but now you've been a little more filled in. This next clip takes place toward the end of Chapter 2. There was a wrong ending that we actually did not encounter. Remember how Ayumi kept getting possessed, and then there was that scene in the bathroom where you see her starting to flip out, then you walk into the bathroom, have a bit of a revelation, run out and hug her, and then she kind of returns to normal? Well, you can be a dick and screw the bathroom. Just try walking away. Just go downstairs. Leave. See what happens when you be an asshole and split up in a game like Corpse Party. Remember toward the end of Chapter 2? Shinozaki sees the body in the bathroom. And she gets possessed and starts flipping out. So I'll go ahead and skip the dialogue here. And she gets creepy. Ow. Okay. Now at this point, what we're supposed to do is head back into the bathroom, and that's where we get that whole flashback scene at the school, where he remembers what Ayumi did for him, and he hugs her and relieves her of her possession. Or, what I did not do was be a dick, talk to this ghost, that poor girl, she's lost her mind, she'll never get it back. Possession is a frightful thing, to have your thoughts pushed deep down into the pit of your soul, and someone else's take their place? Now see, that's not bad in and of itself. But, what I never tried was being a douchebag and simply leaving. Fair question. Oh, is this the same? Is this the same flashback? Oh, you know what I bet this is. So we get the whole flashback anyway, but I guess the difference is heading to the bathroom and investigating versus simply walking away. Because if you have the power stone and you try leaving the room like I just did, it'll break. Yeah, it'll break and you'll hear Miss Yui say, no, don't leave, and you won't be allowed to leave. But I just left. So we get through all this. We get the passionate speech, we introduce each other. 
Nah. Wrap up the flashback. But now I don't know what's gonna change. So yeah. Mm hmm. So that. Nani got them. What no? Nani. Her face is creepy as all hell. Whoa! Ow! Jesus. She freaking wrecked me, like across the room, down the stairs, over to the wall. I think we cracked our head open. Ooh. Jesus Christ, she's strong! And you hear that school bell in the minor key? That's a creepy sprite, man. In addition to multiple broken bones all throughout his head and neck, Yoshiki's ribcage shattered on impact and pierced his lungs. How the hell hard did she push us? As he convulsed and writhed in an ever-growing puddle of his own blood and internal fluids. Jesus Christ. His vision hastily grew dark. The last thing he saw... Ooh, this might actually jump scare me. Because her sprite alone kind of freaked me out. Get ready for this. I'm not ready for this. Was a figure with wide, empty eyes and an unnatural smile stretched across the length of its face. Rocking slowly back and forth in admiration of its handiwork. Get ready. This, this is not going to be pretty. Ayumi was clearly very pleased with herself. Ugh, I, I, I say this every time, but then another text box comes up. Get ready for it. <laughs> oh, it doesn't even show you. The sprite actually really kind of was bad enough, not gonna lie. Any picture that came up here probably would have really freaked me out. There was a really quick bit in Chapter 3 where I acquired a loose board, but never ended up actually using it. Some people had asked me what that loose board was for. Well, in this little clip I'll show you. Oh, and by the way, about everyone was telling me to go back to that empty bucket so Yuka could use the bathroom because that's as good as it's gonna get, and there was that strange yellow fluid in chapter one. No, you know what? I actually tried it. You just look at it, and it says it's an empty bucket, so there's actually really nothing to see. But anyway, here's what that loose board's all about. Now what if we did place that loose board that was kind of bugging me for a while, you know? A tiny corpse. A printout with text written in pen. Daddy, I want to go back to Higan, so... So it's just a name tag? Well, where do I go from here? All it got me was a name tag? Where am I gonna find the fourth... Victim note? Yeah, speaking of those victim memoirs, I never did finish those up in Chapter 3, did I? Well, you know what? Here's the last two of them. I'll show you one right after another. Have fun. Well, we're at the bottom of the stairs. All the way at the bottom. So, we gave ourselves. Oh, did I not read this one? Luck is fickle. Four or five? Cold. Hurts to move fingers. No strength to write on desk. Cannot talk or see friend. Tended and leg cut. Bleeding badly. Ugh. Well, once ago, and you know a bad ending's come off of that. And now, at long last, Memoir 5 of 5. Although, let's see if I can't. Yeah. Looks like I'll be dying soon, so I'm going to try to keep my fingers steady just this one last time. The bleeding never stopped, and I'm getting colder and colder. I can barely see. In the end, we never did find one another here. And unless you magically pop out of the shadows real soon, we never will. Mitsuharu, I've always idolized you.
You constantly surpassed me in every way, always one step ahead no matter what we were doing. I kept telling myself that at some point I'd turn a corner and you'd be there. Uh-oh. But I knew better. My brain knew better. My brain rejected that notion from the beginning. If I should dream in death, though. Then I know I'm going to see you when I turn this next corner, like I've been praying for all this time. We can beat up on each other like we used to. And I'll never have to be alone again. Here it comes. A wave of nausea and unbearable despair suddenly washed over Satoshi's entire body. The next thing he knew, he was standing in the corner of an extremely narrow red room. What? His movements weren't his own. It was as if his mind were disconnected from his body, with no perception of surface or gravity or motion. After a sudden dip jarred his senses, he realized he was moving purely on nerve impulses, with no direction or control. Perhaps he'd been taken in by the curse, by the wave of negativity that permeated this space, far beyond the spectrum of human understanding. His shell of a body might as well have been a twig skipping across the ground in a windstorm. Without warning, his very sense of self had been completely destroyed, leaving him in a virtually lobotomized state. It seemed the remnants of a man's tormented soul are indeed a thing best left untouched. For this dying message, and the curse it carried, certainly had no trouble at all dismantling the essence of what was once a boy named Satoshi. Strange. Well, if you didn't realize it before, you do now. Really super duper seriously, don't read those victims' memoirs. The next thing to be showcased is another wrong ending. This one takes place in Chapter 4. Remember toward the end where Ayumi jumped into the pool and we had to save her from drowning? Well, yes, we already got a wrong ending from draining the pool while she was still in it, but one of the more obvious ones that I didn't do due to having to wait for a while was to just plain let time run out. So let's see what happens if we do that. Oh, so irresponsible. Well, here we are. We have seen... Maybe Ayumi, apparently, jump into the pool, and this time we're not even going to bother draining it. We're going to wait till time runs out and see what happens in three, two, one. Ooh, it was her, all right. Although we had that confirmed earlier, but let's see what happens. Oh, just she just straight up drowns. Well, that was rather anticlimactic. But, at least we got to witness it. Let's go ahead and add that to the archive. Boom. This next scene is really quite special. I'm actually surprised I didn't encounter it in my initial playthrough. This is in Chapter 4 and it gives Naomi one last chance to see Seiko... kind of. Take a look to see what I'm talking about. And this is one more scene that I actually completely was not aware of. So for this one, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna thank that guy with the glasses user Skyscraper for bringing this to my attention. See, in Chapter 4, what you have to do is pick up Naomi's cell phone, save her, one thing I may not have done was examine Seiko's body after the fact. Um, Satoshi just says, like, ah, oh, Shinohara. And then you play the game as normal, pick up Seiko's cell phone, but if you go back to the infirmary... So this is one thing that I think was different. When you pick up Seiko's cell phone, um, Satoshi says, ooh, I don't know, like, Naomi shouldn't see this. But when I actually go back to the infirmary hallway... We get this scene. I haven't actually seen the scene, I just know what happens.
わほんとに目の前が白くなってきたナオミ私死んだら悲しんでくれる悲しいよ知らないでよ私死んだらここに置いてすぐ出口結構死んだらもう私大丈夫ナオミには持ちだくんがいる何言ってんのよ<笑>帰るああ<笑>ナオミ離れてるよまったくこの子のこんな顔クラスの誰も見たことないだろうねうるさいな私もう覚悟できたよ置いてってナオミ分かったから心配しないで安心して寒くなってきた成功しまった私キスもしたことないまま死んじゃうのかねえナオミふん何三角ぐらいしときたいよバカなこと言ってないの大丈夫だよ女同士だしファーストキスにはなんないってこういう問題じゃないナオミ Now, this is another one of those things, like Yuka's extra chapter, where, like, they're dying, do it. I also hear that if you say no, then the sequence just stops. So, obviously, you want to go ahead anyway. Oh, that is an unfortunate dream. I really thought that was going to turn things around, but it got worse at the last second. Yeah, that dream completely switched gears. What the hell? And now we're back to regular play. That was actually kind of punishing. I hate to say this, but I think we're actually going to feel better with another freaking wrong end. I mean, wrong ends are bad, but this one's nowhere near as traumatic, and that was just miserable. Although definitely worth the watch. I'm sad that I missed it the first time, actually. But let's go on to the last scene. This last scene is a wrong end from Chapter 5, one of the very close to endgame wrong endings, although for once it doesn't have to do with Sachiko herself. This is when all of your characters reconvene and prepare to go up to Sachiko's room for the final showdown, but at this time Naomi's gone missing, so instead of furthering the plot, you could just turn back and look for Naomi. And, uh, well, it's a cliched statement, but 
be careful what you look for because you just might find it. Well, you remember this scene, right? We just woke up in the pit of corpses, reunited with Yoshiki, and now we reunite with Satoshi and Yuka. Now, it's at this point that they say that um, Naomi ran off. She had just run off on her own after Seiko's body. So we go through this whole conversation, and instead of following where we should go up to the plot, we're gonna go back and look for Naomi. See if that makes a bit of difference. She would have gone this way, right? This is the way we weren't meant to go. See, normally if I try going that way, it says, oh, we shouldn't do that, and it just forces you to go to the left, but this time... Naomi! Whoa. Creepy look. Wait a second, hold on. I can't see the screen very well, but it looks like... It looks like she's dragging a body. Did she, like, find Seiko's body? It's really hard to see, but I think she might be... Oh boy. Here it comes. Naomi? Um. <laughs> wow. What is going to happen? Oh, just straight up, like just insanity. Ugh. Well, that was pleasant. Jesus. What a merciless game. Christ. Well, with that, all the endings feels real good. Well, there you have it. We tackled corpse parties, extra scenes, and other wrong endings that we didn't encounter in the initial playthrough. This was a freaking blast, man. Now that I think I've covered just about everything that the main story has to add, well, there's only one thing left. The extra chapters. So we'll go ahead and tackle those in the following installment. Until next time, everyone.